Here we go. All right, so time to jump over to the minutes or did you have anything else, Natalie? No. Okay. So uh, anybody have a chance to review the minutes from last month, have any comments? There's a lot of discussion on the permaculture thing that we talked about. The only thing I saw one thing and um, the Grand Ron tribe, I think needs, should be capitalized, GRT. That was just a technicality. Just sharing my screen really quick so everyone can see this. Um, I think that was down. I can't quite remember where. Oh, top of page two, city updates. My oh. oh, I guess my page numbering is different. Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, um, there you go. It's the first. Oh, here episode. we go. There we go. Sorry. Oh, there's two page twos. That's the problem. Weird. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have comments? So with adjusted changes, I suggest the, the minutes are approved. Okay. We covered the... I was say. Oh, we have to do that. That's right. Mm -hmm. So there's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed. I'm going to stay and I didn't get a chance to read them all. Okay. Okay. Um, let me a second. Oh, actually, I thought in my brief second of clicking off, Adam, do you want to take a second to introduce yourself really quick? Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Um, wrapping up a conversation with. Uh, our consultants and, and Peter and I think we're gonna we're gonna meet our Friday morning deadline. So I'm um, for the new folks. I'm Adam Moore. I'm the Parks Development Coordinator. So I've been hired by the city to uh, develop Bowman Bray, Belfour, and Scott Park, and we are um, getting very very close to entering into a contract with GreenWorks. Um, will be our lead consultants on the project, and then. Um, they have a number of sub consultants that are helping us with our engagement in engineering and, and design work for those three parks. So. Great, thanks Adam. Um, so we're on to the public comment section and I'm looking at the participants and it looks like it's, there are no outside participants. So, and I'm assuming no emails came through. I, I did get an email. I know that Kate Hudson from the Lake Neighborhood Association wants to join us. She did send me an email just now saying um, that she didn't know she had to email somebody to get a link to this video. So I just sent her a link to it. Okay. Um, so she should be joining us, but she wants to talk about the park development project, which is at the end of the agenda. So, okay. I think that would be fine. And when it comes to um, to public comment, um, and we'll talk about this more at the end of the PARP meeting, just on the structure, I'm starting to label it general public comment. And that's um, because we're going to be reserving kind of a question and answer on the parks development projects for the very end of the meeting, just so that way we always have it at the same time if people want to log on to check in. So um, at future agendas, you'll see this general public comment, and that is for, you know, attendees coming for random questions or, or comments to PARB. Okay, so next piece on the agenda is the Milwaukee Bay Art Installation Recap. Um, that was a combined meeting of the Arts Committee, formerly known as Art Mob, uh, PARB, and city councilors also were Am I forgetting any boards, but I think those were kind of the main entities that were invited to participate. It was a presentation that was 
put on by um, two gentlemen from the, the tribes of the Grand Ron. And it was a really overwhelmingly enthusiastic response to it. Um, I'll kind of give you a little brief recap, but the, they gave a little bit of a history, indigenous history of the area about the Clackamas people that used to, you know, that lived on, on the land here. And they talked about the, the Clackamas tradition around the arrival of the spring run of this, the Chinook salmon, and that they would in, they would place five depictions of herons, herons on the banks of the river to keep a watch over the arrival of the first fish. Um, and the, the, the art piece that they wanna do is uh, a kind of a replication of that. So um, they wanna place three basalt plinths um, as a per, the plinths would be a permanent a permanent location along the banks uh, along uh, Milwaukee Bay Park that views downstream of the river, preferably on the edge of the plaza or other potential gathering place. And the plinths will be used for the seasonal display of three uniquely um, annual occurring pieces of art depicting blue herons, which will be installed and removed within a three month period and it will correspond to the uh, spring Chinook run. Um, local artists will be invited um, by the Grand Ronde tribe to learn about the, 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 the fish culture traditions and to decorate, embellish, or create a new heron for the placement on the, the plinth. Three artists will be selected annually to work with the tribe in the creation of the herons for that year. And Actually, there's like a little graphic that I, if I can share my screen. That can... um, arts oh. committee meeting was recorded as well. Oh, okay. It's available on the city website for folks who want to watch it. This is just an artist's rendering of the concept. Um, are there three or five? Well, originally they were thinking five, but they um, propose they're proposing three for Milwaukee Bay Park. Did anybody have any questions? I think there was just in general a lot of excitement about. Oh, Gary, go ahead. Yeah. Uh... Did you say they would change the renderings every year? The, different. <clears throat> the heron sculpture would be different every year. So it's not a, a painting, but it'd be a sculpture and, or an abstraction of a blue heron. So there's probably some, some left to interpretation by the artist, but the idea is that it represents the blue heron. Okay. And the idea is too is like when it's removed from the plinth, that it's something that could be donated to an organization, auctioned off. You know, those there's other opportuni there's opportunities there, but it's to be determined. I see. Thank you. That's very similar to how the city's sculpture garden works as well. Um, we have kind of visiting artists who are able to um, use the opportunity to showcase their work, and then they are able to then take their works and. Um, share them or sell them or put them in other museums or galleries or, or gardens. Um, I, I don't know if we know this, this might be something that the tribe will be deciding, but are the artists being paid for making the art installation up front or is it like a, you can then sell it afterwards or something like that? We'll be working on um, an intergovernmental agreement. Well, we have to, we're going to be bringing the topic to council and with council's approval, we'll be potentially working on an intergovernmental agreement, which will spell that out. Um, I do know that um, so far the tribe has um, proposed that at least one of the artists is um, a, a member of the Confederated Tribes, um, but we haven't discussed anything around um, kind of the sale or anything of those. Those I think that's going to be left up to the tribe and um, the, the IGA to kind of spell out. 
Yeah, and that uh, just to add some more clarification to that, that uh, intergovernment agreement would be a three-way agreement with NCPRD. So uh, Heather and and the rest of NCPRD will be working on that that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. It was really great to to see them present it, and I know staff are really excited, uh, and I'm I'm really glad that it was a positive reception. Um, it's very cool. Yeah, I mean the idea that it, <clears throat> it's something that's you know not static; it's different every year. There could be like the ritual of it of when it's being installed, and the education value of it. I think is just super cool. And you know what better place? I mean the way they describe that you know, the location on the river and the prominence at Milwaukee Bay Park, you know, is is what really drew them to this this park. You know, they they came to to the city and the park district saying this is what we want to do here. It's not like we we sought it out. They they're really excited about the site and brought this idea. So um, I'm just glad everyone was excited about it. So Heather. I just want to give a shout out to to just a lot of factors that went into this, I think, becoming such a gesture of generosity on their part. I feel like, you know, years and years ago, I mean, before I was ever involved, uh, um, the community really asked for art that would be integrated on the site. And that's been carried through every phase as an intention and a priority. So I think it's really important to just give the community at large a lot of credit for that. And then I think more specifically, um, you know, the, the steering advisory committee for the Milwaukee, Park Pro, Milwaukee um, Bay Park project also really worked at trying to engage more voices and members of that committee were not only steering, but they're out in the community trying to engage different voices. And then the city, from what I understand, has really been working to cultivate um, a stronger relationship with um, tribal governments. And so I think it's just really a testament to not only the tribe's generosity, but just a lot of people's efforts over the years to sort of create a situation where these kinds of things can happen because the dialogue is already there and the relationships are already there. So kudos to all the people out there that have, have really made this opportunity, you know, be something that could happen. Um, I just thought of one more question, and that is, there's been a lot of discussion um, or people loving the idea of having it be like a festival and a celebration each year when the herons come out. I'm wondering if there's any official like city talk of the city making it like a city festival or something more like a city holiday or something because uh, that might be a good way to make sure that it happens. Kind of like Earth Day is something the city is organizing each year, you know. I think that's an, an interesting idea. I, I don't know. I would definitely lean into the tribes weighing in and being the ones to, um, you know, lead or even reflect their interest in that. Um, I know when talking about even when the herons would arrive on dates, it sounds like um, I heard that there was some flexibility in, in just, you know, when the salmon run actually comes up and it can be very difficult to identify an actual date um, to, to celebrate things, um, which is um, it sounds like the reason even why the the heron statues might we might be choosing a number of three rather than five in order to minimize confusion between the actual ceremonial and cultural practice. Um, I think definitely, I mean, I know I'll speak for our, at least for staff, there would be excitement on having some sort of celebration or being able to at least assist in the celebration. Um, but that's very much on the tribe's kind of timeline and interest and in, um, whether or not they would be wanting to share, um, you know, something a, a more formalized uh, medium. I'm sure it'd be a very popular event in Milwaukee though. <laughs> Yeah, I love that it, <clears throat> an idea of like engaging and getting, drawing people down to the river, you know, like the boats, the solstice, and, you know, this is something so, so different and unique. Um, that's awesome. Any other questions about that? Are we ready to 
move on to Earth Day? I will say that one, one thing that I heard in their presentation, which I really liked, was uh, the importance of kind of oral history. And I know one question was around kind of, should there be any sort of um, signage? And I really liked their, their take on the fact where, um, you know, they, they appreciate the oral history and the storytelling. And so the idea of around like guided tours and walks instead, I thought that that was really cool and something that I know I, you know, didn't think of. Um, and I, I just thought it was really, really cool. All right. Jackson and Allie. Wait, I have one more question. Oh, Natalie. Um, yes. When is the when is the first art sculptures going to be put out? I think timeline, that's a good question. I think timeline right now, we're uh, locking down the details and um, first we need to get the um, a few the construction IGA approved and then go into um, construction planning. And so that would be almost a, as Heather and NCPRD in the city, as we start kind of getting timelines down, we would lock down with the tribe when our installations should occur. We'd have to coordinate it with construction. Gary. Yeah, probably won't happen until next year with all the things we have to do before uh, this happens. So Natalie, it says Earth Day check-in. Your your name is there. Are you going to be leading this discussion? Yes. Okay. I just had, I was going to start running some Earth Day details by PARB um, and wanted to see who maybe, this might be a, a, a subcommittee um, or something, but um, so Earth Day, sorry, I'm also I'm taking, by the way, minutes for this meeting. Uh, one thing I forgot to include on the agenda is we might wanna do nominations for a secretary at the next part meeting. Um, but so that's what, don't mind my scatterbrained if you see me trying to form sentences. Um, so Earth Day, I wanted to check in on Earth Day because it's upcoming. So Earth Day will be, um, Earth Day is April 22nd officially. Uh, typically we celebrate it on the either um, prior or following Saturday. So this is a Friday. So I'm assuming uh, April 23rd, that is a Saturday. Um, we could hold our Earth Day celebration. Now at past par meetings, it's my understanding that what we want to do is have a restoration event where we can feature a few stakeholders such as Watershed Council, Milwaukee Parks Foundation, anyone who would want to get involved on um, doing either an invasive species removal or restoration planting. Um, that site, an ideal site, would be our Pennywood Detention Pond, which really is larger. It's a big natural area. Um, and then either before or after the restoration event, we would want to have things like a plant giveaway, potentially pizza or some sort of refreshments, and then also a permaculture class or um, webinar or overview. Um, can I get a thumbs up to see if I, I got that right? This all sounds in line with kind of what we were talking about before. Does it sound oh, good? We discussed, I don't, I don't think we came to a conclusion of whether to do permaculture class before the cleanup event or after. That's right. Correct. Yeah. And so, um, perfect. Awesome. So what I wanted to see, I'm going to proceed with kind of coordinating a restoration event on that day. So everyone mark their calendars, Saturday, April 23rd. I'm going to reach out to um, some other organizations, NDAs, et cetera, to, to let them know that the event will be upcoming. Um, I'm going to start planning more of the details of it. Um, what I would like is potentially um, a few volunteers for to be maybe kept more in, in touch with what's happening on the planning side. And then I'd also, just, just to get the information and I'll give everyone updates at every part, um, but then also a few folks to really lead the permaculture class planning. And I think 
I, that was Allie and Jackson before. Is that still our subcommittee for the permaculture class? Oh, I should give a context. Um, Virginia and Heather, <laughs> we, um, we were talking at past PARB meetings around Earth Day. So PARB is um, the, the board uh, for the city that kind of takes on Earth Day is the one that kind of hosts it. Um, in the past, it's usually centered around a volunteer activity. Um, there's been trash pickups during uh, COVID. We did kind of an informational um, kind of like short video series with some local um, groups. And this year, I think we would really like to do a restoration activity focused around some city owned land that kind of needs a little TLC when it comes to uh, invasive species and replanting. It's really an ideal site and it's actually quite pretty. Um, and there was interest from part members on kind of having an educational aspect of it. And the, one of the topics in particular being permaculture or essentially um, sustainable agriculture. Right, Jackson, it's kind of like permaculture is just like intentional plantings and treatment of the land uh, such that it's kind of more tied into the ecosystem and sustainability. Um, so we haven't fleshed out the details of that yet. And so Jackson and Allie volunteered to be on a subcommittee for at least the class component for kind of finding somebody who might wanna lead a permaculture class. Um, so if either of you are interested in, in the permaculture aspect or in the restoration event in particular, um, you can either email Allie and Jackson uh, or you can email me and then we can all coordinate on it. Um, but I'm just letting PARP know that I'm going to kind of march forward and start planning this event and start reaching out to maybe the Watershed Councils, Milwaukee Parks Foundation, any other interested groups to see um, if they'd be interested and how they would want to participate. I think we probably need to follow COVID protocol, so it might not be as big as it could be in the future, but um, I think it still should be a really great event. Yeah, I think the Parks Foundation is doing that Minfund part again on Earth Day. Oh, sure. perfect. Yeah, we did that oh. last year too. Now CCC also have a whole bunch of cars around that kind of subject right. as well. Mm -hmm. You said Milwaukee Parks Foundation? Yeah. Sorry, cut out. Carrie. Uh, thanks. Yeah. I, I work a lot with Johnson Creek Watershed Council, and you mentioned councils. So I'm going to tell you what we have done in the last 10 years or so on Earth Day. I personally have worked with the Waldorf School and uh, Moda and owner of property on the riverfront in Johnson Creek. And uh, we have picked up garbage every Earth Day on the day. And we'll probably be doing that again this year. Um, uh, last year, we had over 25 people working. It was a really good pickup and we got a lot of junk. It's amazing. Uh, the river, the way the river flows in winter, uh, stuff backs up on the west side of Johnson Creek and comes in. And uh, so we just get all sorts of things. But I'll probably be working with that again. So I, again, do a lot with Johns Creek Watershed Council. I'm on their advisory circle. Thank you. A few questions. One is with the kind of two different main events happening Earth Day, the restoration and the permaculture class, both of them might enjoy per, uh, partnering with these other organizations. Should we re reach out separately? or as you're reaching out to these organizations, could you mention the permaculture class? When I reach out to the organizations, I'll, I'll mention the permaculture class. I'll let you two figure out the details if you want it before or after um, and how you want the class kind of coordinated. Um, but my idea is that they won't overlap in time so people can participate in both. Um, yeah. And then, um, and then if, if the stakeholders, depending on how the permaculture class um, is, you know, either in person or located, uh, we'll just make sure all the details are shared um, 
for that. And then um, when it comes to the solve event, so oftentimes solve is an organization that uh, coordinates volunteer um, litter pickups and such. That's one who we've gone through in the past for the city. Uh, they typically always ho hold solve events um, like the one that Gary was mentioning uh, within Milwaukee and the, the Portland area. We've heard from some folks that they wanted also some something dealing more with plants, which is kind of why for Earth Day too, we're, we're trying to move away from like the message around around uh, waste and more towards trees and, and natural resources and such. So that's that's why we kind of deviated from the, the traditional litter pickup of uh, Earth Day events in the past. Um, one more question is, um, perhaps somebody has a good estimation of how many people would participate in a city run Earth Day restoration project and if that number of people exceeds the number of people that we could have for following COVID guidelines, uh, perhaps doing multiple events, like we could have the main restoration event, but then partner with Solve to say, and if this event fills up, here's some easy to organize cleanups that you can go do over here. I think that's a great idea. Could it be something that <clears throat> people have to RSVP for? So then you know exactly how many people are coming and can control it or yeah in the past um we typically you know of course covid guidelines are changing by the day um i have held events in the past that we both registration and capped as well as events where we just ask for registration just so we can get a heads up on numbers and and then we just let whoever wanted to help out show up day of um, probably the latter is what I would suggest for this event, where we would um, ask folks to um, register ahead of time, just so we can make sure that we have the right amount of supplies um, for folks like thinking about shovels, et cetera. Um, and then whoever did want to show up day of, they would be welcome to come and attend. Luckily, we will be outdoors, so um, there would be plenty of space to social distance. Uh, we can, depending on um, you know, requirements, we can ask folks stay in their own pods or um, family groups or, you know, friends groups. Um, and then I would say for, um, we just would, you know, the, the permaculture class would just be the one thing we'd want to be more intentional about on where it was located, either virtually in person or outdoors. Um, I would probably I would probably recommend that we would not hold it inside just because a lot of folks are uncomfortable um, either being indoors at this moment or, you know, uh, the city may impose kind of building restrictions, which has happened in the past when it kind of shifted some events around. Martha, I see your hand up. Yeah. Um, is there an outdoor facility that's covered that? that could accommodate the permaculture um, event? There is a covered structure at uh, North Clackamas Park. Yeah. That would be next to the Milwaukee Center, um, which would be a, a great location. Yeah, maybe that would be a good alternative. That's all I had to share about Earth Day. I just wanted to give everyone a heads up that I'm from the direction from past part meetings, I'm going to start um, coordinating a restoration event. Um, I want to make sure to get um, permissions from adjacent property owners, et cetera, for a restoration uh, activity, just in case folks are walking through. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Uh, Jackson and Allie, be sure to reach out if you guys need any support with planning. It'd be great if we could have at least one other person, especially because uh, my donut business will start going in for the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival. So in March, I'll be um, pretty busy with that. So I obviously don't want to leave Jackson um, hanging. So it would be great if we could have one more person on our subcommittee just to um, carry the load and have ideas. Looks like Heather's volunteering. I am. That's me raising my hand. Yeah, so... Uh, just let me know what you need. I'll look to you guys to tell me where where I fit. Awesome. So excited, Heather. Thanks. Are, are you going to bring donuts, Allie, to the donut event? business, Allie? I actually, 
I, yes, I told you guys about this last year, but yes, yeah. one of the things that I was going to think about was that, or recommend was bringing donuts to the Earth Day event. I won't be able to go because I'll be working, but I can bring them um, for the morning. They're apple cider donuts and we can just do, keep it simple and just do all apple cider, but yes. Yeah, come That's visit delicious. me. Delicious. Oh my Just gosh. A little, little plug there. No big deal. <laughs> I raised my hand at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also just realized I won't be able to come to the permaculture or the any of the Earth Day events either. So but oh. I'm happy to help plan. <laughs> Okay, are we ready to move on to NCPRD updates? Okay, Heather. Um, well, I am gonna keep it brief, um, but I did just wanna let people know, um, particularly the new people on our group that um, the district advisory committee meets monthly and we do division reports at that time. So in the past, I've always developed an update just for this group, but now we're relying on the division reports. And um, you also have two DAC members, um, district advisory committee members on this board. So you have a, and our next item is in fact, a DAC has a DAC item on it. So I just wanted to let you know that you're, you're well plugged in. Um, but I, I think what makes sense for me to do on an ongoing basis now is just kind of cherry pick a few updates that I think you might be interested in. But I am gonna put in the chat once um, I wrap up, I'm gonna put in the chat three links, one is to uh, just sign up for updates if you're not already subscribed to our updates. Also a link to the division reports because uh, it's actually a link to the meeting minutes and the agenda packets, but inside the agenda packet is where you'll always find the division reports. Several pages of updates, so more than you need, but it, you can find out about upcoming events. By the time I get to this meeting, some of those events are passed. So it's, it's at the second, second Wednesday every month. You can check online if you don't go to the meetings. And then I'll also put a link in for the January division report so you can see kind of the bigger sphere from which I'm cherry picking a few items. Um, the first one is, first update is just on Milwaukee Bay Park. We kicked off the design development phase, which means we pick up the design where we had it in 2019 and we work on a new cost estimate. So that work's going on right now. And then what we'll do is we'll take the new cost estimate and we will um, use it to inform our work going ahead. So most likely given that three years have gone by, we're gonna be adjusting the project. We have a fixed budget, but costs have risen. So we'll be working in the next uh, several months to look at how we can modify the design to fit the budget we have. And that's exciting and creative work. We also will have some hard choices. So um, please feel free to follow that process. We'll be giving an update, just a minor status update at our next DAC meeting on February 9th, and then a more substantial update on some of the design strategies we, we'll start pursuing um, at the March meeting. Um, and I'll give you an update here in February as well. But I'm really excited. We have a super talented team on board um, and uh, I'm excited to keep you updated on that project. I should also notice on our, on note on our project team, we have Adam Moore who's with us tonight and um, Peter Passarelli from Milwaukee Public Works. So we have the city very directly plugged into the, to the uh, approximate uh, two year process ahead. Um, and let's see a few other updates. The, uh, just a couple of fun highlights uh, the nutrition program raised um, uh, almost $15,000 through a partnership with Happy Valley New Seasons Market, which is a um, fundraiser and it's one of the most successful fundraisers this program's ever had. So I just kind of cherry picked that out because our program of delivering food through our nutrition program is um, really important in this community and our service has expanded quite a bit in COVID with homebound folks. So um, just wanna celebrate that um, very fun uh, accomplishment. Um, we also have a few, uh, few events coming up for volunteer events. We're partnering with the North Clackamas Watershed Council, um, Ferry Spark, which is the acronym for Friends of Elk Rock Island and Spring Park and the Island Station NDA to sponsor a volunteer service event at Spring Park and possibly Elk Rock, depending on what the river levels are. It's gonna be February 5th from nine to noon. We're also partnering with them again to sponsor a service planting event at the Hull property, which is a lot closer down to Gladstone in the Southern part of the district um, on February 12th from nine to noon. And then 
partnered with them once again on a volunteer service planting event at North Clackamas Park on February 26th from nine to noon. So if you're someone who likes to get out there and get your hands in the dirt, um, these are some great opportunities to, to do some volunteer events. Uh, let's see. Um, we're gonna be hosting a series of trainings to create more swim instructors this month. And this is what we're trying to do is equip ourselves to uh, offer more swim classes. And I bring that up because Councillor Nicodemus asked a little bit about swim lessons last year. As everyone can imagine, things have been very in flux because of COVID. So we're trying to get back up to the point where we have enough staff to offer a wider array of swim programs, assuming that it's gonna be safe to, to do these things again. Um, we're prepping for some spring fever adult softball league. If you know people are interested in softball, three league nights, Thursday, Friday, Sunday at the Nelson Sports Complex. And then the North Clackamas Park Fields are gonna be opening for practice and play the first Monday after spring break. So it's that time of year for ball play. Uh, in case you're not a baseball fan, for example, you should be, you know, but not everyone is. Um, and that's about it. So um, I know I don't have a lot of time on the agenda, but if anyone has any questions, I'm here. Thank you guys. Any uh, free WSI classes? Uh, good question. Actually, let me look at that really quick because we were offering free lifeguard training just as a way of trying to get more people in and I might have skimmed over an important update. We had, we had a free lifeguard class with 14 participants. Um, and what we do is we offer those and then we really, really hope they're gonna come work for us. That's, that's kind of how that works. Um, I think we're gonna have one again. I don't know when it's gonna be. So um, keep following, uh, keep following the calendar because those should be on there. And if you want me to ask, I can also ask. So just say the word. Gary. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I was wondering when you said you were working in Spring Park with Island Station area, what was the date? I feel like it was February. Well, I have to look. February, there were three events right in the same time. So uh, it is February 12th from nine to noon. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question, Heather. The, the funding for Milwaukee Bay Park, when is that going to the BCC for approval? I'm waiting to hear myself on that. Um, the, um, our director, that's a direct conversation between our director and the county administrator. So I'm expecting an update myself, maybe as soon as next Monday. But the intent, what Gary Schmidt, our county administrator said at our last DAC meeting is that um, the county would like NCPRD to bring that to the board as expeditiously as possible. So I'm hoping that it will go in early February, but I'm waiting to hear. <clears throat> Thanks. Welcome. Desi, did you have a question? Uh, no, it's it's more like recruiting for lifeguards. Like I'm just, I'm I'm thinking in my head to get you know, more kids, like there are a lot of kids that live in those apartments over there, like maybe going to Rao High School or Rao Middle School and promoting that, hey, there's these free lifeguard classes. You could, you know, learn how to be a lifeguard and earn money. So I would, I would love to take that on if that's all right. Sorry, I was doing some verbal nodding, but I was on mute. Sorry about that. Um, I can connect you directly with Jason Kemmerich, um, just via, that, e via email, yeah. and then you guys could maybe you could offer your help, or he might be able to also do some of the things that you're suggesting. Yeah. 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 Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. And if you're doing the free WSI classes, I I'd want to do it. I'd, I'll do some. Uh, I used to teach swim lessons back in the day. Nice. I just wish we had an outdoor pool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So for those of you who don't know, WSI is water safety instructor, and it's like the kind of basic uh, or the, the entry level water safety instruction for swim lesson instructors and, and swim coaches. And fun fact, my first job ever was as a lifeguard and water safety instructor, and it turned into an accidental career until I went to grad school at like 28 years old. So um, it is a pathway to uh, pretty good paying jobs that are always in demand. And, um, you know, if you're at an outdoor pool, you can you can sometimes get a tan, too. Fun fact, uh, I used to teach water aerobics. <laughs> There is, it was this. great. It was, it was some of the best times I had with all these older retired women, <laughs> Lita's and Dorothy's. <laughs> I think we need to make uh, a water aerobics class happen. We could do it as like a PARB uh, NCPRD joint event. Um, 100% yes. <laughs> let's make this happen. We well, can be busy teaching, right? Yes. We can even ask OHA to see if they can donate some sunscreen because that would be my biggest panic. <laughs> Water aerobics in the Willamette River. There you go. Swimming class in there. <laughs> All right, so I think the next agenda item, I am, have to recuse myself, right? I think we do have items from board members. Oh, that's right. I don't have to recuse myself yet. <laughs> um, this is kind of piggybacking off of my question to Heather about the funding for Milwaukee Bay Park. Um, the DAC, Unanimous, unanimously approved the the full funding mechanism for Milwaukee Bay Park, which includes, you know, a certain I don't know all the dollar breakdowns, but it does include a portion from NCPRD district. And there was kind of a lot of there was a lot of concern about from from some members of the board and the community that people on the DAC may not support that because of you know, a, a project in the south part of the district is kind of at the last minute, I think, didn't have the funds that were, were thought were there, which is Concord, the Concord project. And so I think a lot of people were really nervous about the fate of the Milwaukee Bay Park funding because of, because of that. And so a lot of people came out in droves to support funding. So there's some people here, uh, Gary in particular. Uh, so, um, Thanks everybody for that. And I wanted to punt or, or at least bring it up to the group, you know, because there's people here that are relatively new and don't know a lot of the background and how important this park has been to a lot of people in the community and just not just here in Milwaukee, but the entire region. Um, and obviously if NCPRD is going to be putting this to the BCC in February, we may not have a chance to meet again before that meeting. And I feel like if any entity, if the BCC, if any entity is advocating for Milwaukee Bay Park, it is, it is like our PARB. I mean, that's kind of why we're here. This is like the thing, the biggest thing ever for mm -hmm. our city, for our board. And so I want to Put that out there to see if if we can put a letter of support for the funding um, knowing how much the community wants this not just here in milwaukee people are coming from all over the place yeah the past foundation is going to send money for sure that's what we did last time so we'll probably have some advertisement on facebook etc does Anybody a question? Yes. Is who would be the best person to draft the letter? Well, Ginny's got a draft of one that the foundation started. I can take a look at that and knowing a lot of our people from our groups involvement in it and being on the steering committee, I feel like I could um, take a 
take a pass at it and then send it out to the group maybe later this week or next um because it would be nice to get it to the bcc by next week considering how it, there's no definitive timeline of when uh, NCPRD is going to present it, but it sounds like it's expeditious, which means it could be soon. <laughs> and I, I think that board needs to know the importance of it because um, funding is an issue all over Clackamas County. And, you know, folks on the BCC are the only one lives in our district, and that's Paul Savas. And, you know, he very much advocates for um equitable funding around the district and knows very well some of the issues of the, the southern part of the district so he's he's definitely supportive of milwaukee bay park but has a lot of concerns just overall about funding so uh, i think the rest of the bcc really needs to hear from everybody in the community and and um yeah and i think um we might need to uh sorry gary i didn't mean to interrupt but um just just for procedure, I do think that we need to motion for PARB to sign on in support of drafting a letter for funding. And then that way we could share it around and that way we don't have to come back to the next PARB meeting with the letter. <laughs> I make a motion that we uh, draft the letter and send it to, to, to NCPRD and their committee uh, in favor of Milwaukee Bay Park. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. No comments? Aye. Aye. No opposed? Yeah, I, I think we need I think we need to say in it that it's definitely a regional park. That's the big push about it. So everybody that's south of us or east of us or concerned about it, they can come on down. Okay. So Given the the time constraints, you know, when I when the the draft is sent out to the group, you know, oh, I'm going to ask for just like a, a really couple days in order to get back, you know, because time is of essence. So this isn't a senior thesis project. We just want to like hit the hit the finer points, the big bullets. Okay, great. That was. Only my that was my update. Oh, other things at the DAC. Um, Desi, did you want to chime in on any if, all things at the DAC besides that? I don't. No, I I don't know if that's <laughs> appropriate. Okay. Yeah. I think the I think the other Heather was trying to chime in. Yes. Only to clarify that when I find out any de anything definitive on the schedule, I'm happy to communicate that to Natalie so she can send it out to the committee. Thank you. I, I will add one thing, like what Gary said, we, we need to make sure that we emphasize it's a regional thing for the entire district and not just a Milwaukee thing because Milwaukee Bay Park in reality is not a Milwaukee thing. It's, it's, it's a meeting spot for everyone to enjoy the riverfront. And what, what I guess what I noticed, it, it, it kind of turned into a Milwaukee versus this, and that's not the point. Like we're a district, right? It's, it's a district thing. So if we could just emphasize that it's, you know, for the greater good of Milwaukee or for Clackamas County, that would be great. And then if they don't even get like, if that's still not hitting the mark, maybe they're like really, you know, money motivated, you can say that Milwaukee Bay Park is also going to increase real estate and it's also going to in increase the value of your property. So Hit them, hit them from all sides. Milwaukee Bay just happens to be on the Willamette River and not every place within the county is. And so it's definitely a regional park. OK. 
Okay, is there any other updates from board members at this point? Okay. Now, now can I recuse myself? Yeah. You could probably explain why, but should I turn my camera off so I don't like give googly eyes to people and make them feel funny? <laughs> if, you want, if you so want to. <laughs> I already feel funny, Ben. <laughs> Uh, I don't have that good enough eyesight to even be able to see the googly eyes. Um, awesome. So everyone, this this um, last item on the agenda, um, Adam and I were discussing kind of how we wanted PARB uh, to be involved kind of as, you know, we have these three major parks development uh, within our community, um, Balfour Parks, Bowman Bray, as well as Scott Parks. And, um, and we felt like it would make the most sense for PARB to be where the regular updates are shared about the development of these parks. And then we would invite uh, members from the community, members from the district, the DAC, um, Parks Foundation, as well as NDAs to hear updates at the regular PARB meetings. And then that way everyone has the same information. Everyone knows when the next update's coming. Um, and then also we can record these videos, uh, these meetings and then post it online. And we already have minutes. So that way everyone can kind of um, be able to follow up later. Now, um, this group, is, of course, is an advisory body to council, and so um, all of the information that's going to be shared is really informational. Um, PARB is always welcome to uh, motion, to send suggestions and such uh, to council, particularly, you know, as we go through processes around engagement, go through processes um, around design. Um, PARB is one of many stakeholders in our, our of course, in the community, and so we want to make sure that we hold everyone equally in their engagement. Um, and so PARB will be the repository of the information, um, but we'll also have these larger engagement processes happening in the community. And so you'll be hearing of, and we'll make sure that PARB members are aware of things like surveys, in-person events, et cetera. Um, and we want to make sure too that, you know, PARB members can uh, help uh, the city and NCPRD and everyone by sharing out information about the surveys and getting folks involved, um, particularly, you know, if you yourself are involved in other um, community groups where if there's folks who maybe have been underrepresented or, you know, that you see an opportunity for more voices to be heard, we'd really appreciate it if, if you guys kind of could help us um, with that messaging. And so uh, what we're kind of planning on doing is holding the last 30 minutes of every meeting um, for this kind of parks development update. Um, sometimes we're not going to take the full 30 minutes. Other times we might exceed the 30 minutes. Um, but that way, at least, you know, members of the community know when the update is going to happen. It also tends to, you know, work for folks who are maybe having a, a typical nine to five work schedule. Um, but like I said, you know, we're going to be recording this. People are always welcome to submit comments and questions ahead of time to Adam. Um, his information is on the city website, as well as mine. You can always send questions to me and I'll make sure that they're passed off to Adam um, or other, you know, staff members as needed. And we'll try to address those questions at the, the next part, uh, part meeting. Um, we're also going to be having at the very end of the development update, uh, we'll hold uh, time and space for any questions from attendees of tonight's meeting or any part meeting, as well as the questions or comments that we've heard ahead of time. Kind of you can think about it as its own public comment period at the end of the agenda. Um, but since no decisions are really being made here, um, it's not like we have to open up and close testimony, et cetera. It's just more, we wanna make sure folks have time to hear everyone else's questions. So we're holding that space. Did I miss anything, Adam? Uh, um, I think you got the gist of it. Okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, we'll be back next month. So there's always more info. Um, but I thought maybe what we could do is um, pass it off to Adam and Adam, you can share any updates that you have. And I know, um, and then after that, we can answer any questions. I know that we have, it looks like Kate, hi Kate is here. Um, and so any questions we can address. Um, and, uh, and then if there's more questions, we can obviously address them at the next meeting. 
You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to start taking notes for what you're saying though. So great. Great. Um, so, okay. So just to reintroduce myself again, just, um, for our guests. So I'm Adam Moore. I'm the parks development coordinator here at the city. I was hired for a limited duration to work specifically on Bowman Bray, Belfour and Scott park developments. Um, I gave an update to council on June 4th. You have a link in your notes. Um, some things have changed since that video. Um, that was January 4th, right, Adam? What, did I not say January 4th? You said June 4th, but that's okay. It's all the same. I'm in January 4th. Uh, time's a little bit relative to me. Um, I will say that right now, this is a work in progress. Um, and our timeline right now is a little bit fluid. Um, some things have taken a little bit longer than we thought they were going to take. Some things have moved a little bit quicker than we thought that they were going to move. Um, but on January 4th, I gave an update to council. And part of that update included uh, a discussion about timelines and deadlines for the grants. So all of the money for this project, the two and a quarter million dollars that uh, we have for these parks, those are all ARPA funded parks. So the American uh, Rescue Plan Act, I think it is, maybe it's the Recovery Plan Act. Um, it's all COVID money, but it comes to us through the state legislature. And there are kind of two buckets of money that they have. One is for infrastructure projects. And then one is for projects that are legislated out by uh, the individual senators and, and representatives. And we fall in the money from the senators and representatives. Those have different deadlines than the federal deadlines and the infrastructure type projects. And that surprised us when we got our grant agreements uh, the week before Christmas, I believe it was. And that deadline was June 30th, uh, 2024. We were expecting a deadline of December 31st, 2024. Um, and for the federal money that goes directly to cities and other government entities, that 2024 deadline is actually what they call an obligation deadline, a, a contract deadline. You don't have to worry about unspent funds until like 2026. But we have June 30th, 2024 as our deadline. Uh, we have reached out to the state. Uh, we've talked with uh, League of Oregon Cities. Uh, we've talked with our representatives uh, who and senators who helped us with the funds. And uh, we hear that there may be in the future some room uh, for extensions on a case-by-case -case basis, but there won't be a sort of uh, program-wide uh, work for uh, or extension process on these, on these grants. So um, right now we are treating these deadlines as, as June, June 30th, and, and we had expected that we would be cutting ribbons and wrapping up the deadline on, in October. So we're hopeful for, for more positive information, official information from, from the state on those deadlines. Um, so I know that there's been some confusion out there about those. That's the information that we have right now. As I get you know, official updates from, from folks, I will, I will let you know, but we are talking with, with the state and, and people on that. Um, so as I mentioned, we have these funds for uh, Scott Park. Scott Park does not have a master plan right now. Uh, there was a master plan that was put together in 1990 that was repealed by the city. Um, and then the expansion and, and change of the Letting Library project made that master plan kind of obsolete. So we're, we're essentially starting from scratch. There are a few amenities in Scott Park uh, although most of those are actually on the library property. Um, and so we're going to be working to create a new master plan for Scott Park. And then we're going to uh, refine because a lot of time has passed and the world has changed quite a bit since NCPRD led the process uh, to put together two very good plans for Bowman Bray and Belfort Park. Um, Things are a little bit fluid right now. We're still working to get our consultants under contract uh, in my update. To council, I talk about how we selected our uh, consultants for the project, but we are going to, uh, our lead will be Greenworks. Uh, ben works for Greenworks. And so Ben uh, identified before they uh, submitted to our RFQ process that he had a conflict of interest. So Ben will not be working on this project on either side of it. So at these meetings, he's allowed to attend. 
He's not allowed to really participate. Um, any votes he can stay for for quorum purposes, but he can't. Uh, he has to abstain, uh, and that's that's part of the the law. There. He also, hey, you said no googly eyes. Now we got a sad face. Um, um, and then he also won't be working on the project as as a GreenWorks staff person. So it's it is a big loss for us because we we uh, really value his work and he's he's great at what he does in his professional uh, world. But um, uh, we did feel that that GreenWorks and a number of sub consultants that they brought onto the project will really do a great job with our engagement. Uh, I talk a lot about in the. Um, update about how we're focused on equity-based engagement and what that means. And so our goal is to do a layered approach to community engagement, um, focusing on reaching the people who have not been part of the conversation. Uh, big emphasis on that is reaching our BIPOC community. Um, so our Black, Indigenous, and people of color is who we want to reach because historically they have not been involved in this process. These are also COVID funds. So a big part of our work is to make sure that the parks that we are spending money on right now allow for um, safe gathering space outdoors. Um, you know, you'll see that like Belfort doesn't include a, a shelter. Uh, it rains here a lot. You know, maybe if you're you're going to be moving into the expanding affordable housing and uh, apartment complex that's being built around Belfort, maybe you really want to see. A shelter there and some tables and barbecue grills. Uh, I don't know. I'm just picking some things out of thin air right now. But it's important to note that that these COVID issues and the BIPOC equity piece that we're looking for, those are interrelated. Um, COVID has affected our BIPOC community uh, more so than, than anyone else. Uh, we also know that the BIPOC community needs quality outdoor space for gathering space and recreation space more than other people. And so that's why we're doing this refinement that we're doing. Uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna have kind of a layered approach to our community engagement. Um, the dates on this are very fluid right now, but we see that we're, we will do probably, um, and this went out in the RFQ, we think we're gonna do three uh, kind of broad community engagement events for Scott Park. Those would start probably at the end of March, probably closer to the beginning of April now. Um, and then for Bowman Bray and Belfort, those would be, uh, I think in mid-May. Um, and those would be focused on what do we need to, what has changed since 2014, 2015, when we put these master plans together? What are we missing? Uh, what do we need to add? What are the barriers to uh, people using the park? Uh, what are some things that we missed in the design? Uh, so those are going to be open to the public. Anyone is allowed to attend. These are going to be live events. Um, our original intention was that they were going to be in-person events. Um, I think the one in March will probably be uh, virtual on, on Zoom. The ones in May, we're holding out hope that we can do those in the park uh, because getting into the park really changes some of the discussions that we can have. Um, but I will know more about that that soon. Um, Adam, can you can you repeat those um, general dates just so I can write them down in the minutes? Yeah, so I think that uh, Scott Park, um, uh, an engagement event, a live engagement event would happen uh, either end of March, beginning of April and mid-May uh, for Bowman Bray and Belfort. And we see two live events for Bowman Bray and Belfort. The difference between that is that there's already been public plans that were put together with uh, you know, multiple engagement sessions already. So Bowman Bray and Belfort are starting much further along in the process. There's been no discussion with the community since like 1989, when I was nine years old, over what people want to see in Scott Park. And so we need to kind of get them caught up. Um, so that's one layer of the engagement. Another layer of engagement would be online. So through online surveys, through comments and questions on Engage Milwaukee, um, we will be working with our consultants on crafting questions, translating questions into Spanish, and making sure that any work that we do, um, either in person or online, will be translated. We'll also have live interpreters for Spanish and other languages or American Sign Language will be available as necessary. So online is that second group. 
we'll also see be putting together some focus groups. And we've been kind of going back and forth with our consultants and um, some other staff here at the city, including John, our uh, equity program manager on how best to use focus groups. Um, but the idea is that we would have some specific groups um, from our BIPOC community, perhaps a youth focus group. Uh, maybe we're looking at people who are differently abled or seniors to have them look at uh, the designs uh, after they go through that second round of engagement for Scott Park and that first, uh, that additional round, first additional round of Bowman Bray and Belfort. And these focus groups will be focused on, you know, um, you know, looking at them from the lens of the BIPOC community uh, or through the lens of, of, of a youth group, um, the people that typically don't get reached in some of these things. And that is to try to create kind of a, a safer place to have that discussion uh, and not only talk about what they want to see in the park or what's missing with the park, but also maybe to have a discussion. Again, this is very fluid, but to have a discussion on the barriers that exist from them using the parks and perhaps are there not only experience, we won't want to capture in our design experiences that they want to have in the park, but experiences that maybe that we want to avoid or try to mitigate before they go to use the park. The goal is with this project to create safe, inviting, inclusive parks that everyone feels comfortable in using. We see these focus groups as the layer that's going to help us get to that. Um, all of these things, all these layers are going to be happening at the same time, as well as discussion with stakeholders. And so Natalie kind of touched on this. We have a lot of different public boards. Um, I already gave a, an update to city council. I see that happening about quarterly. Uh, then we have PARB. We have the Equity Steering Committee, which has been written into the grant that we are going to work with. So our public engagement plan is going to be going through them. All due respect to you, PARB, but our public engagement plan is going to go through them first. Uh, I will keep you updated on when we have those discussions with the Equity Steering Committee at their meetings, but you will obviously, as well as the general public, be invited to you know, view those discussions, but that meeting is going to go through them. The rest of the updates are going to go through PARB. And the reason for that is because we have Equity Steering, uh, Lake Road Neighborhood Association, Historic Milwaukee, and Ardenwald Neighborhood. So there's four uh, public boards in addition to PARB right there. Uh, then we have the Library Board for Scott Park, the Arts Committee, the Tree Board, and any other board that wants to pay in there. So to prevent me from having to go to seven different meetings once a month and try to prevent having you know, uh, discussions of who I told what to or the information of uh, you know, the telephone sort of game to prevent that, as well as the fact that like sometimes things like this change very rapidly. The idea is that like anybody who wants to know where to find information for this part, uh, this project, or make a comment on this project, or ask me a question, PARB is the answer, right? The third Wednesday of every month uh, at 5.30 is, is where to, to get that information. That doesn't mean that I won't independently work with Lake Road Association and come to their meetings and have a discussion with them about Bowman Bray in particular. Obviously, those, again, are public meetings that everybody can come to and witness and talk to. Uh, going to the equity committee to talk about things, the engagement sections or things that we learn from focus groups or to get specific feedback from us, lens from them. Um, that's how that would work. Um, but the, but I, I can't go to seven meetings um, you know, we, we, we have a limited budget on this project. We have a very limited time. Um, and so we are really trying to hit the ground running and save time wherever we can. So we, we want to involve everybody. And the, the idea is that, you know, there's three parks involved in this project. And so you are our parks and rec board, and we will be, you know, giving these regular updates here and these will act as our, um, comment. Uh, periods. In terms of, of roles, uh, Natalie touched on that a little bit. It will be, you know, we will be seeking recommendation from you. Hopefully you will be recommending this, uh, these plans to city council uh, and to the planning commission and other decision makers. Um, we will be seeking that from our other boards as well, neighborhood association, equity committee, et cetera. Uh, but it's city council who's going to be doing the approving of these process of these master plans before they go to you know, land use review and, and planning commission. Um, 
So uh, Kate has been, uh, you know, talking with me and emailing me and she sent me some, some uh, questions yesterday. And so we actually get to try out live. I said, hey, we're actually having the discussion at PARB tonight uh, to answer questions on the project. So that's, uh, so she got kind of the, the um, uh, sneak preview or at least the, the early warning on this. But this is something that, that, that we are bringing to you. Uh, you know, and I think now might be, Natalie, stop me if I'm wrong here, but maybe is a good time to, for me to stop and let Parb kind of discuss uh, or maybe ask some questions on that. But the idea is that all the boards will be involved. It's just, we were gonna ask them all to select a representative, appoint a representative to come to Parb, sit in on these meetings, take information back to them, ask questions of them. And if there's a request to like, for me to come visit them, they can reach out to me anytime, but also through these meetings. So that's the idea. Does this sound in general? Can I see overall approval for kind of this process moving forward? Are you guys okay with reserving the last 30 minutes um, for updates? I see thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Great, perfect. This will help a lot, especially since Adam probably wants an evening or dinner to himself and not on Zoom once in a blue moon. <laughs> okay, well then maybe, um, did you have questions that you wanted to answer in this meeting to start off, Adam? Well, yeah, so, um, you know, I, I guess just before we move on to like, general questions on the project. Everyone's comfortable with this. Does anyone have any questions about my update or, or anything else that I mentioned here? Okay. So Kate, uh, kind of quite, uh, I'll lean towards you, but you sent me an email with some questions in it. I can uh, kind of go through those questions and answer them one by one, and then you can save some time to follow up. How does that sound? Okay. Um, so you feel free to interject here if I, if I'm maybe mischaracterizing the question, but let me pull this up real quick here. So, uh, Kate reached out and said that, um, you know, she shared, uh, my council update with some of, uh, the people from her neighborhood. And the first question that came out of this was, uh, you know, Belfour has a million dollar budget and Bowman Bray has $700,000. Um, there's two hundred, two and a quarter million dollars for three parks and the one by the letting library is small. Can I explain the difference of these budgets? So these budgets were put together by the city before I worked for the city, uh, doing some kind of rough cost estimates of the 2014, 2015 plans. So it's looking at the amenities that are in those plans and trying to do some very rough cost estimates there. The parks are about the same size. So Belfort Park is about 0.8 acres. Bowman Bray is about 6.9. Scott is about 5.5 acres. All relatively fall, small, similar in, in size. But where Bowman Bray and Belfort really differ is in their topography. Uh, Belfort Park has a lot of hills and a lot of uh, large standing trees. And if you might imagine, if we're trying to build a playground on a slope, we're going to have to move a lot more earth to get uh, level. And we're also going to have to build a retaining wall to put that in there. We also have to work around the trees and do a lot more tree protection. So that uh, changes uh, that cost as well. So it's not just the size of the park, it's the shape and topography of the park. Um, another thing is, is that Belfort Park requires a great deal of what we call frontage improvements, utility improvements, sidewalks, curb, uh, connection to different utilities. Uh, that's all part of the code. These are actually very expensive. They're so expensive that we're asking engineering and other city budgets to pay for about half of these budget uh, improvements just so that we can make Belfort happen. Uh, Bowman Bray right now does not need to be brought up to code. And I can talk more about Bowman Bray specifically uh, in front of and right away at, at uh, Bowman Bray in a second year. Um, the last thing to keep in mind is that while these parks do have, they all it's all federal funding through the state legislature, they come from two different districts. Uh, one comes from a Senator who had more money to give to individual projects. 
and one came from a representative and Bowman Bray and Scott Park are in uh, a separate district than Belfort Park. So I would caution people from looking at this and saying, well, we got a million dollars over here and 1.2 for two parks over here. So a million seven hundred. Can't we move some of that million over? And uh, that is uh, not possible because they they uh, technically have uh, two different sources. Now we did get all the money for Bowman Bray, Belfort, and Scott Park that we asked for. Uh, we actually asked for money also from a, a, four, a third district for uh, Fernberg Park. We didn't uh, we didn't get that money, so we did get everything that we were allocated for. Um, so. That was a long answer, um, but uh, you know I think that that's a very important question. We want to make sure that we address it right away. Um, second question was that in the budget, you will see me mention that we have, if you watch the update, we have fifty thousand dollars for um, acquisition and to address right away issues at uh, Bowman Bray Park. And uh, someone from the Lake Road Neighborhood Association noticed this. And they wanted to know if that $50,000 was for a four by eight strip of land on the west end of the park or something else. Uh, and they had some questions on, you know, what kind of right of way improvements and is there an update on what's going on? Um, so what I'll say about this is we do have $50,000 in the budget for Golden Gray Park to address access issues uh, at that park. And there are several. Um, so a lot of you might be aware if you're familiar with the park that the southeast corner of the park um, is, all, is accessible from you know, a public road. Uh, the rest of the three and a half sides of the park are private property or owned by you know, the uh, Oak Lodge Water District, I believe it is. Um, it is not clear at that park you know, where the public park starts and where private property starts, uh, where those lines are all those way around. It's not always clear where the public road ends and the private drive begins. And in an ideal world, we would um, we would be able to address all those access issues with this fifty thousand um, dollars. The solutions to those problems aren't always acquisition based, um, and we're going to, since we have limited funds, try and solve the biggest problem first. Um, and so that is, there is a privately owned strip of land uh, at the end of the road on the west end of the park. The dimensions are actually 12 feet by 84 feet. Um, and we are interested in, in purchasing that park property and adding it to the park. Um, it's important to note though, when we talk about having $50,000 for these problems, it's not only that there's more than one problem that we're maybe looking to address if we can, it's that that $50,000 includes every single cost associated with uh, these problems. So you have appraisals, you have uh, maybe title search work, maybe there's environmental investigations, maybe there's survey work. These are federal funds. So we have to go above and beyond what we would normally do for just like a normal residential uh, you know, property transaction. So there's gonna be a lot of work that we need to do here. Um, I should note that you know the city council uh, has authorized city staff to enter into negotiations on that strip of land. Those negotiations are ongoing. I can't really comment about ongoing negotiations, but any approval would have to come from council and would have to follow the federal guidelines that we have uh, for, for acquiring property with, with those grant dollars. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on at Bowman Bray. You've really got you know three and a half sides of the park are privately owned or owned by entities that aren't the city. It's very confusing. Um, that's led to people putting up no trespassing signs that makes people feel unwelcome. In fact, one of our equity um, uh, consultants, we were talking about Bowman Ray Park and he said, hey, wait a second. You wanna make people feel welcome at the park. I go down there and all I see is no trespassing signs. He's like, that is not only unwelcome. I for, can speak for to that because we had homeless people coming down our street and I live on that end, the very end. You don't even know my house is there. I'm on the easement of the three houses on the south side of the park. There's the public drive and then the invisible line of private land starting. Yeah. So I just know we want to be in a really transparent conversation with all this processes of what conversation you need with my two other neighbors and me 
a relation to that part of the road and all that. Plus, I mean, we literally, had, I had a homeless person come all the way down, come running into the creek, ready to barrel it next door. And I'm like, you need to not be here. And when somebody is disoriented and I am super not, I, I, I want help for people, but when they are disoriented, whether it's by mental instability or drugs, they need a familiar sign to know not to be somewhere. Right. right. That is all. And yeah, I live yeah, alone. And, so and I'm so, kind of like, whoa. And I get that. So if there's another solution, I'm open to that. Yeah. And and so yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize that that, that was too. I didn't realize that you it were terrified you were, us. Yeah. Well, no, and yeah. and that that is, you know, when you live next to a park, yeah. <laughs> uh, whether it's developed or not, and whether if it's going to bring people to the park. He was not at the park. I think it was from the sweep of Portland pushing people out. They all remember they all kind of fluttered all the outside city parts for the summer. I'm sure maybe I, some other people felt that. It was it was a it was something that happened. And so that was when that happened. But it made me really feel like nobody really knows I'm here. Yeah. Plus, then that means nobody really knows I'm here. Right. And also like, <laughs> but nobody knows that that's not a public road. And so, yeah, I so whoever that, needs that, that's why that was put up just to assist in some way in the interim, yeah. but it's not like, I'm an open-minded person about that. We just want it all. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't trying to suggest that you weren't open-minded. No, no, I just want to clarify because I put those up and I'm totally okay to own that. Yeah. I just didn't know what else to do at the time. Yeah, no. And, and, right? <laughs> but, but I think, I think everyone can kind of maybe be yeah, totally uh, compassionate and sympathetic to where you're at. And I can see and your position too. I totally see that. So that's why our, like, our position is, I guess our position is that uh, the going from a public road to a private drive like that, when there's property on both sides of a public park is very confusing for people. And this is, this is one of those situations where the solution probably isn't us buying your driveway. Cause I can tell you, we probably can't afford it. I don't think we um, want to sell it to you. So it's okay. <laughs> exactly. Right. We can't, we're we not need to get to our houses. Um, but there are, there are solutions out there. And this is one of those solutions that maybe isn't acquisition based that we can try to try to come to a solution about. Um, and that is kind of what this budget is for and what we're going to be trying to solve here. Um, you know, we, like I said, we got a lot of property. We got a lot of people that live around that park. Um, and our goal is to create an inviting park, but be respectful of, of our neighbors. And that's what this is, is trying to, for us to get to is, is how do we, how do we balance that for everyone? Um, Adam, I'm so sorry to interrupt. No, um, I just want to note that it is 605. And so I just want to check in. Um, I know that I'm not able to stay much, like I'm not able to stay, but I just want to bring that attention to everyone if they're comfortable staying um, after. So I will be, I can know I will be done with her questions in three minutes. Perfect. Sorry, that was not me to try and to be like, nope, just wanted to give everyone that. Okay, great. Okay. So, um, so those were the two big questions. The other questions I sort of answered. The the next one was about timelines. Um, so we hope to be entering into contract with our consultants uh, on February second. That might get pushed to February sixteenth. Uh, we're going to try and avoid that as much as we can. That's why I was late to this meeting. Um, but uh, I'll have much clearer ideas then. But we're looking at for Bowman Bray Park that first, you know, general broad engagement uh, piece happening in mid-May, but we will be kicking off things online and starting discussions with people and reaching out to all the other districts uh, and public boards. Uh, now that we've had this discussion with PARB, I will reach out to the other neighborhood associations and public boards and say, hey, send a representative to PARB meetings and we'll start talking about timelines as we move forward. We were kind of waiting to have this conversation before reaching out. Um, and then, then the other question I think was on, uh, how did we come up with these cost estimates? These cost estimates come from the 2014, 2015 plans, plus some very quick math done by, um, by the city and then asking for, for this money. So that's all. I, I think I've addressed all your questions. If I haven't, please feel yes, free to ask. Thank you. I'm just also officially the point person for Lake Road NDA for the park to take questions, bring them here or take things back. And I'm very much interested in, in spearheading sort of the grassroots, talking to the neighbors, knocking on doors to really try to be equitable. 
when people don't read the pilot, they don't see Facebook posts, it's all in the, I don't want anybody coming back saying they didn't hear something because I really want people to be engaged and not be upset later, just like you all don't. But yeah, to really, we, like our whole team wants to be on the foot and yep. knock on doors when we know there's something coming up soon so that they take action immediately and doesn't get lost in the sea of what their schedules are. Exactly. That that uh, that personal outreach and that work that you guys will do uh, will be super helpful for us. And we hope to have that at all of our parks and for all of our things. And I will be, you guys are going to be seeing a lot of me at the city and around town over the next year or so. And um, we're very excited. Uh, I think we put together a really great consulting team. We're really looking forward to working with all of our partners on this project uh, and, and bringing some great parks to Milwaukee and, and the district uh, for, for everyone. So that's all I've got. So then I think what we need, if there's no other questions, um, I think what we need is a, a motion to adjourn. I will just plug one more time. We're gonna be doing nominations for a secretary at the next month's meeting. And part of that is because knowing that Ben needs to recuse himself at the end, if Allie can't happen to make the meeting, I wanna make sure there's a third person who would be an officer uh, or a board member, chair, board officer. It was officer back when I was in clubs in grad school. So I'm gonna use that word uh, for a secretary so they can um, help facilitate the meetings. So just start canoodling on, on which ones uh, who you might want to nominate, be it yourself or another uh, member. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. I, th I think at 6.09, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. OK. No opposed? All right. Good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Hey, Adam, can you stay on for two seconds? Yes. Natalie, before I go, I just wanted to say I was at a meeting a few days ago and they mentioned you and oh, how dear. good you've been with the, um, like, instituting the climate action plan and organizing stuff. So, just oh, thank to you. <laughs> have a good night. Bye, Jackson. Thanks for that. Hey, I was just going to say, um, I'm trying to take notes. I'm for, I'm not going to record, I think, like note down every question that community members ask, but if it's a relevant one that I think you're going to get asked, I have been writing it down and then we can make like an FAQ page on the city website or something with those same questions. Oh, you're muted. I changed that. Uh, yeah, I think that's a really great idea. And I think that what's going to be helpful for recording these is you know, make a note of the question, make a note of the topic, and then we can go back and look at the video and post that. But I think, um, stopping recording. Stopping recording.